Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 good actions by usually bad countries. We're used to our media feeding us narratives in terms of black and white, the world has good guys and bad guys, and it's as simple as that. While those countries that earn the bad label frequently do do some terrible things, reality is way more nuanced than our media lets on. Here are 10 surprisingly good actions by countries many would consider our enemies. Number 10. Cuba led the world in fighting Ebola. Ruled by one of the few Marxist dictatorships still in existence, Cuba has long been a handy villain for those who forget the Cold War ended years ago. It's true that the country has a fairly shady record where freedom of speech is concerned, but there's at least one area where it's been an unconditional force for good. Cuba led the world in fighting Ebola. Cuba has one of the best healthcare systems on Earth. Since the US embargo, it's made a habit of indulging in something called medical diplomacy. This means Havana sends doctors out to the world's trouble spots as a way of boosting Cuba's profile. Right now, the island of 11 million has close to 50,000 doctors working in 66 countries worldwide. When the Ebola outbreak hit Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone, Cuban doctors immediately suited up and went abroad to kick the virus's ass. Their response put that of other countries to shame. Around 12,000 Cuban medical staff volunteered and were among the first on the scene. This despite a top Cuban doctor typically earning only $67 a month for their troubles. Their effort was instrumental in stopping the outbreak, and the Cuban delegation were later praised by the UN for their work. Number 9. Gaddafi's Libya helped fight apartheid Nelson Mandela was one of the greatest symbols for peace of the entire 20th century, so it can come as a shock to hear he was pals with notorious despotic murderer Colonel Gaddafi. There was a good reason for this. Gaddafi's Libya was one of the only countries in the world to continuously support Mandela in his fight against apartheid. It's easy to forget now that Britain and the US once officially considered Mandela a terrorist. They supported the white supremacist regime in South Africa, and people openly displayed Hang Mandela posters. Gaddafi, on the other hand, backed his African compatriot 100%. While the West was condemning the ANC as terrorists, dictatorship-era Libya was supplying them with arms, hiding places, and funding. Mandela himself considered Gaddafi a true friend of black South Africans, and even supported him in the bloody last days of his murderous reign. Without Gaddafi's Libya, it's possible Mandela's long walk would have never ended in freedom. Whether that makes up for the mad dog's notorious human rights abuses is an entirely other matter. Number 8. Russia is a massive regional aid giver What with the crisis in Ukraine, you might be forgiven for thinking Russian aid is a euphemism for annexing the eastern part of your country. According to Gallup, Putin is this century's big bad in most Americans' minds. However, Russia isn't an entirely selfish state. For its regional allies, it's one of the biggest aid givers out there. Compared to other G8 nations, Russia's aid budget is stingy, but when the Kremlin chooses to get involved, it makes sure that money counts. In 2009, it basically saved Tajikistan's vulnerable economy by pumping in tens of millions during the worldwide recession. In 2006, Russian medical aid saved thousands of lives in Central Asia when an influenza pandemic hit. Fast forward to 2015, and Russia is leading the Central Asian fight against ISIS. The biggest beneficiary has been Kyrgyzstan, a poverty-riddled, ethnically divided country that's prone to extremist influence. This small state has recently received $1 billion from Russia, equivalent to almost a seventh of its entire GDP. Thanks to the Kremlin, stability in the region is looking assured. Number 7. Venezuela helped bring peace to Colombia, hopefully. Since 1964, Colombia has been in a state of constant conflict with Marxist guerrilla group FARC. It's the longest currently running war in the world and has cost over 220,000 lives. Yet peace may well be on the horizon. In 2012, the Colombian government and FARC finally met at a negotiating table in Havana. Fast forward to 2015, and peace may be on the verge of being declared. For that, you can thank Venezuela. Historically, one of Colombia's enemies, Venezuela under Hugo Chavez, was consistently accused of funding FARC and giving the rebels hiding places. Then, as the second decade of the new millennium got underway, the old left-wing firebrand seemed to have a change of heart. In 2012, it emerged that Chavez has been instrumental in getting FARC to the negotiating table. The importance of this cannot be overstated. Colombia currently has more internally displaced people than any other country on Earth bar Syria. An end to the decades-old war would immediately give hope to over 7 million people and improve the lives of everyone in the country. 
If peace is declared in March, as everyone is expecting, it will be thanks to Chavez. That's not to say Venezuela shouldn't expect any thanks. Since Maduro took over following Chavez's death, he's gone straight back to undermining the Colombian state and generally being a bit of a dick. Number 6. China is leading the fight against climate change China is more America's frenemy than an outright bad guy. The countries have some pretty strong differences, but basically need one another. Still, stuff like the Middle Kingdom's notorious human rights abuses can make it seem like Beijing is far from siding with the angels. Yet, there's one positive area where China is now leading the world. Climate change. China is the world's biggest polluter. For years, it has resisted attempts to curb its emissions, linking belching refineries with a strong economy. Then, earlier this year, everything changed. Out of nowhere, China gave itself some of the strictest climate change targets we've ever seen. Already, Beijing is following through on them. Over $90 billion has been invested in clean energy, compared to $52 billion for the United States. If the program keeps up, China will be leading the way for industrializing nations that want to tackle climate change. The reason for this may be more pragmatic than Beijing suddenly going all green and eco-friendly. Many of China's cities are choking under lethal clouds of smog. Still, with a problem as big as climate change, it's less the why that matters and more the what. Number 5. Pakistan Takes a Stupid Amount of Refugees The United States takes more refugees than any other country on Earth, with over 3 million currently residing within its borders. On a per capita basis, Jordan is the current refugee haven thanks to a massive influx from Syria. But one of the other greatest refugee-taking nations on Earth might surprise you. It's not Germany, or Sweden, or anywhere in Europe or North America. It's Pakistan. By most measures, Pakistan is a worrying place. Human rights violations are extremely frequent in the country, and it's long been thought that Islamabad supplied North Korea with the technology to make its first nuclear bomb. Still, when it comes to refugees, they're clearly among the good guys. Since the war began in Afghanistan in 2001, Pakistan has seen over 3.8 million Afghan refugees cross its borders. As of 2015, it remains home to 1.5 million, a figure the UN High Commission for Refugees calls the largest protracted refugee population globally. Although it hasn't all been plain sailing, the UNHCR seems to think Islamabad is doing a good job. The government has given Afghanis proof of registration cards, issued 800,000 birth certificates for Afghan children born in the country, built special refugee villages, and given refugees access to schools and healthcare. Number 4. Zimbabwe has set educational records Under Robert Mugabe, Zimbabwe has gone from being a strong economy to an absolute basket case. Inflation is rampant, underemployment soaring, and life expectancy is shockingly low. Like many dictators, Mugabe has enriched himself to the detriment of his countrymen while employing violence to keep himself in power. Yet, there's one area where Zimbabwe is a country that can be proud of itself – education. In recent years, Zimbabwe has achieved the highest literacy rate on the African continent. Around 90% of its population can read and write, a rate that would put some European countries to shame. Elementary school attendance is incredibly high, with nearly 90% of children attending classes. To call this an achievement would be an understatement. Many rich countries have far less educated citizens. There's also an additional bonus to Mugabe's expansion of education. The political scientist Masupula Sithol used to say that by educating his countrymen, the president was digging his own grave. Hopefully, we'll live to see Mugabe forced from power yet. Number 3. Communist Albania Drastically Improved Women's Rights Under Marxist dictator Enver Hoxha, Cold War Albania was doing hermits-like isolation before even North Korea. Under his rule, Albanians were forbidden from leaving the country, nearly everyone else was forbidden from entering, and you could get a visit from the feared secret police just for having a beard. Yet, there is one area where Albania was undeniably making the world a better place. Under Hoxha, it was committed to spreading women's rights. Before communism came to town, Albanian society was intensely patriarchal. Women had zero rights, they were barred from working or participating in politics, and were given the same legal protections as objects. Then, the equality-minded Marxists took control and immediately set about liberating the sisterhood. Under Hotcher's watch, women were emancipated and socially liberated, given government jobs, and generally brought into the modern world. As a result, today Albania has better legal protections for women than some other Balkan countries. It might not quite make up for the Stalinist torture centers of Hoxha's heyday, but, you know, credit where it's due. Number 2. Saudi Arabia is surprisingly humanitarian 
As a country that still practices crucifixion, Saudi Arabia doesn't often feature in the same sentence as the word humanitarian. Right now, the Wahhabi Kingdom is causing a human rights disaster in Yemen and has been accused of funding regional terrorism, including groups linked to ISIS. Yet, there's a bright side to this petrodollar-fueled medieval kingdom. Saudi Arabia is consistently one of the world's highest givers in foreign aid. The kingdom gives over $1 billion annually, including huge chunks for humanitarian assistance and UN peacekeeping missions. It's consistently ranked in the top 20 countries for giving, and in 2012 gave even more than many European countries. According to a Guardian data blog, Saudi Arabia even gives more than Belgium and Italy. So where does all this funding go? Well, it's mostly to long-term aid recipients, countries in sub-Saharan Africa and other trouble spots. In short, it goes to the people who really need it. Number 1. Serbia is basically awesome Thanks to its actions in the 1990s, Serbia's name is still seen by some as a synonym for evil. In Bosnia, Croatia, and Kosovo, the country's leaders committed countless war crimes in pursuit of an ethnically pure Serbian superstate. There's no doubt that these actions were horrific in the extreme. Yet, there's another side to the Serbian story, one we hear less frequently. Since the end of the Balkan Wars, Serbia has gone from being the regional bully boy to the coolest guy in the neighborhood. Don't just take our word for it. Only a few months ago, the EU praised Serbia for its handling of the refugee crisis, calling its actions humane, a sharp contrast to some other Balkan nations. Then there's the matter of Kosovo. In 1999, Serbia was so unwilling to part with its restive province that NATO airstrikes were called against Belgrade to stop ethnic cleansing. Today, Serbia is formalizing normal relations with its poorer neighbor and taking steps towards recognizing its statehood. In recent years, Belgrade has even complied with handing over wanted Serbian war criminals. Far from being an international pariah, modern Serbia is seemingly doing everything in its power to make up for past indiscretions. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give us a like below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this seven days a week. This video was actually based on a video we previously did called, which was uh, all about the top 10 evil actions by usually nice countries. So you can see why we did this one. It was actually a, uh, a viewer suggestion. So if you have suggestions for lists, do leave them in the comments below because we do look at them and we do produce them when we can. Below that, we've also got the top 10 nations that won't exist in 2115. So check those out and thank you for watching.